Add Astra Abyssosk. Recently, the Adventurer's Guild has received an unusual commission, and after careful consideration, we believe that... The Traveler would be the most suitable candidate, right? <laughs> Indeed, as ever. I will spare the pleasantries, then. May I ask if you two are available to help? Well, let me go over it briefly. Our client for this job is the Yashiro Commission. Apparently, Rift Towns are attacking the roots of the Sacred Sakura nearby Mount Yogo in... Rift Towns? On Narukami Island? Yes. We are not sure where exactly these creatures come from. But this time, they are attacking in alarming numbers with great aggression and a clear target. The Sacred Sakura is of tremendous importance to Inazuma. I trust you are aware of this already? Good. Then you can see that this case is very urgent indeed. Is the Tenryu Commission aware? Yes, and they are already taking action of their own. However, given that the Sacred Sakura's root system is vast and complex, and faced with the unpredictability and scale of the Rift Town's attacks, they are finding it difficult to defend against them. Their main priority is to protect the civilian population, so they are actively looking to cooperate with all other available forces to eliminate the monsters. The Adventurer's Guild is one of the key parties assisting the Tenryo Commission with their work. But so far, the combined efforts to combat the Rift Towns has failed to substantially ameliorate the situation. You have our deepest gratitude. Your confident response puts me far more at ease. I will mark on your map the areas where Rift Town appearances have been recently reported. I hope you won't encounter too much trouble overcoming them. Relax! We'll be back before you can say Ad Astra Abyssos! This is destiny. <laughs> Send them all. It has been a long time. We have not seen each other since the resolution of the Tenryo Commission crisis. Okay, sounds more like A. It is you, right? You sure made short work of them! That was amazing! I'm making early preparations for what is to come. Last time we took a walk around Inazuma together, I witnessed the way the world is today. 
I was finally able to comprehend some things that I had never understood in the past. Since then, every time I encounter an obstacle in my thinking, I find myself having the urge to spend some time in the outside world. Makes sense. You must get super bored being stuck in there all the time. Might I remind you that I am not here to amuse myself. Recently, I have observed a number of changes in the external world from the plane of Euthymia. The most serious of these being the attack on the sacred Sakura by numerous rift hounds. I considered this matter worthy of my attention. So I pursued them, and they led me here, where I happened to run into you. If the Shogun rather than I were to discover them, yes, perhaps she would have left the situation alone. Hmm? Why? Because she's just a puppet? Precisely. According to the rules I designed for her, matters of this nature are to be delegated to the Tri-Commission. But Rift Hounds attacking the sacred Sakura... <sighs> It brings back bad memories of that terrible disaster. A disaster? Yes. Five hundred years ago, a great catastrophe befell Inazuma. Everything was engulfed in a pitch-black fog, and monsters ravaged the land. Countless lives were lost, and this homeland that the people had worked so hard to build barely escaped being obliterated entirely. The monsters committed many atrocities on Inazuman soil, and the Rift Hounds were always their advance guard. Their duty was to tear open a passage through space with their claws and teeth, and then call in even more powerful beasts. Hmm. So you've heard of it, too. That's an episode of history that I am loath to recall. Maybe to you, it seems like my response to these creatures was an excessive one. But an excess of caution is not unwarranted in this case. Guess you can't argue with that. Since we are both here for the same reason, let us work together. From the traces they've left in the surrounding area, there should be many more monsters nearby. All of them must be eliminated. Paimon feels so safe when we're in Ace Company. Having someone uber-powerful on your team kind of makes you feel invincible, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. After we've dealt with the monsters, we should ask her to tell us more about Conria. This color! It's similar to the color when the Sacred Sakura takes damage! Let's follow it. It should be this way! The damage is not too serious. The Yashiro Commission will be able to nurse the root system back to health. This stuff that's flowing out, is it sap or something? And how come it's glowing? Huh? What's this? Could they be... dead people? It wouldn't be the first time we'd seen ghosts on our journey. But... Why would they appear here? Let's search the area. Perhaps we will find out. Uh. Uh. I can't go on like this. Not when the other troops are counting on me. What happened here? Could you tell us? Who are you? What are you doing here? Run quick while you still can! The monsters will be back. And once you're in their sights, I'm telling you there's no escaping them. We will defend Inazuma until our dying breath. You... you don't know? Inazuma is engulfed in darkness. Beasts and horrifying monsters are everywhere. 
They are merciless, ferocious, and they will devour everything in their path. Every last trace of humanity's existence, I tell you. They'll devour it all. But, look, none of that seems to be going on around here. Not right now, but they'll be back. Look, get out of here, now. There's no time left. The Almighty Shogun is gone. So is Kitsune Saigu. There is no one left to rely on but ourselves. I don't know how long we can hold out for. But if we abandon our hope, then we've got nothing left at all. Don't worry. I'm right here. It's... the Shogun? You're back. Please, we beg you. You have to help us. You have to save Inazuma. Only the glow of your supreme lightning can dispel this terrible darkness. Please, or the whole of Inazuma will be reduced to a hunting ground for the beasts. Calm down. The war you speak of is over. Over? But what do you mean? Shogun... Look around you. The grass grows green and lush, and a soft breeze blows. This is Inazuma at peace as you will no doubt remember. There are no monsters, nor is there anything else here that could threaten your life. What? B but how? Just moments ago, they were everywhere. I saw them tear my comrade to shreds with my own eyes. Hey, calm down. Everything's fine now. Huh. I think I understand. Almighty Shogun, you saved Inazuma. Yes, we were right to place our trust in the almighty Shogun. As long as the Shogun is with us, Inazuma will last for an eternity. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, thank you. What's wrong with him? He's gone. Paimon can't even begin to understand what that was all about. If I am not mistaken, what we just saw was a samurai's memory that was buried in the land. The sacred Sakura can absorb and purify the filth in the ley lines. After the Rift Hounds attacked, some of this filth leaked out through the cracks in the trunk and formed a physical entity. An entity formed with strong filth would be highly aggressive. But when purified, it presents in the form of a memory. Purified filth quickly dissipates, and will be absorbed by the ley lines shortly afterwards. So the memories of the ones that died are all appearing at this moment? Yes. That soldier was one of the many thousands who made the ultimate sacrifice. What he was describing just now was precisely the disaster that happened in Inazuma 500 years ago. Yes. Inazuma was facing many great crises at that time. Some were local in origin, while others... <sighs> others came from the now-fallen kingdom of Kanria. The disaster in Inazuma caused me great concern. I felt that I had to step in before it was too late, otherwise it would spread to all of Tevat. But my friend, Kitsune Saiku, reassured me that I had nothing to worry about. She would shoulder the responsibility of protecting Inazuma, and mobilize all forces at her disposal to combat the threat. I could tell that, although neither of us acknowledged it, we both knew that the road ahead would likely end in tragedy. So, Inazuma was attacked at the same time as when the disaster happened in Kanria? Indeed. Countless monsters suddenly appeared throughout all of Inazuma. In the end, Kitsune Saigu sacrificed her life to protect the people. I never had the chance to see her one last time. But I would like to believe that she kept her promise to me until the very last. But even then, Inazuma was left more devastated than we could have ever imagined. Those terrible tragedies left great wounds that are still felt to this day both on the land itself, and in my heart. Hey. 
Yes. For the longest time, I couldn't bring myself to face the pain of that loss. All my martial might was in vain. Though I could conquer Tatarigami and vanquish monsters, I was helpless against the ravages of time, powerless to keep the ones I cherished alive. <sighs> but, after my clash with human ambition, I thought long and hard. Now I realize I cannot fix... When I traveled around Inazuma with you, I caught a glimpse of how the nation has progressed over the centuries. A glimpse of human potential. Everything far exceeded my expectations. Moving forward inevitably invites further loss, but also new encounters. Just think of that soldier. Despite all the losses he had experienced, he still chose to keep fighting for the sake of moving forward. All those who sacrificed themselves back then gave their lives fighting for a future. But perhaps the future they were hoping for is not the eternity that I once strove for. As Inazuma's god, it is high time I honored their wishes. Warriors of the past who spilled your blood on this land your noble souls now rest in this earth. I will never forget you, and all that you did for Inazuma. He's taking all this pretty hard. <sighs> Come on. Let's keep investigating the damage to the sacred Sakura. Would you ask that? Well, usually you'd pull out your sword and swish! Vaporize them all in one go! You are unduly concerned. I'm simply conserving my energy. Although I have some understanding of the situation already, it could take an unexpected turn at any time. I must be prepared for anything. If there are more formidable monsters lying in wait in this area, I must make sure I have the strength to face them. Ah, makes sense! Spoken like a seasoned shogun. The roots seem pretty badly damaged this time. We definitely need to tell the Yashiro Commission about this. Hey, the same light is leaking out again. <gasps> Furuyama? Is that you? Hmm? Almighty shogun, what brings you back so soon? I thought you were off fighting a battle in a distant land. Fighting a battle in a distant land? Sounds like this guy's talking about 500 years ago, too. Allow me to introduce Furuyama. He is a tea master and a member of my retinue. Though blind, Furuyama is unparalleled in his ability to appraise tea. He brews some of the very finest tea in all of Inazuma. Your Excellency, you shower me with praise undeserved. I have simply had the good fortune to be in Your Excellency's presence long enough to become acquainted with all the skills that are required of me. It sounds like the Almighty Shogun has brought a guest. I'm afraid I'm unable to serve you any respectable refreshments on account of the current situation. But please, sit and rest. After all, it's quite a mess out there. What should we do? Oh, 
Um, yeah. Sheesh. There's monsters everywhere out there. It's pitch black and loads of people have been injured. I see. So, they have fought their way this far already. Most of the residents in this neighborhood have already escaped. They wanted to take me with them, but it seemed rather pointless to me. So, I decided to stay. And now the almighty Shogun is here, I have even less reason to run away. <laughs> Imagine if this was something that even the almighty Shogun was powerless to resolve. Where could I possibly run to then? People flee out of a desire to live on. And the desire to live on stems from a feeling of having unfinished business in life. But me, I have no such thoughts, and I have no regrets. The almighty Shogun often speaks to me about her dreams over tea. Just listening to her stories, ah. I've been blind for many years, but her vivid descriptions took me on a splendid journey to all the most beautiful places in Inazuma. Over time, I've come to understand her mindset. Quite the romantic at heart, a true dreamer. One thing she always says is, good things don't last forever. Everything changes, fades, disappears completely over the passage of time. And so, people must make the most of the life they have, seize the chance to enjoy it while it lasts, and have no regrets in the end. So you see, as bleak as things may be now, I have experienced countless wonderful things in life and have no reason not to be satisfied. Perhaps you are right. It won't be long now before I have to say goodbye to the almighty Shogun for the last time. Ah, what a pity. I'll never get to see what Inazuma looks like after the almighty Shogun rebuilds it anew. But I suppose it doesn't matter. Everyone says that Inazuma has turned dark now. But to me, it went dark a long time ago. Once this catastrophe is over, life is sure to spring forth anew. But even if I survived until then, I'd probably be a hopelessly befuddled old so-and-so by then. <laughs> so, never mind, eh? <sighs> Oh, goodness me. Speaking of befuddled, look at me rambling away to my heart's content and forgetting to serve the tea. The almighty Shogun comes to visit and I don't have the tea ready. A truly egregious loss of decorum. One moment, I'll just... Hmm? Where in the world is the tea set? I hope the others didn't smash it to smithereens in their hasty departure. Really? But it's always been right by my side. Goodness gracious, what a fool I'm making of myself. I couldn't possibly have my guests fetch it themselves. That would be most discourteous indeed. Don't worry about it. Take a rest. We'll be back right away. Almighty Shogun, you're not going too, are you? No, no, no. Your humble servant implores you, not with the war raging outside. This place is... complicated. It's quite unlike the tea house in your memories. Leave it to us. But... Well, okay. I never thought I'd see the day that I need the almighty Shogun to personally collect my tea set for me. I can't decide whether it's a final regret or a final stroke of good fortune. <laughs> isn't exactly the most urgent thing to do right now. But at the same time, this lovely old man from 500 years ago has been through so much. And it makes Paimon so sad. I'm also feeling very nostalgic for his tea. Oh, why don't we go to the Kamisato estate? There'll definitely be a tea set we can borrow there. It's the Traveler, and the Almighty Shogun! 
How might I be of assistance, Your Excellency? I wish to borrow a tea set from the Yashiro Commission. Oh, uh, sure. I'll fetch that for you right away. Uh, please step into the courtyard and have a rest, Almighty Shogun. Oh, and I'll inform my lord about your visit immediately. Ah, and the tea set. I'll bring that here as soon as it's ready. Be at ease. I'm not here to see Commissioner Kamisato. Actually, I'd prefer to spend this time chatting with the Traveler. Please, fetch the tea set at your convenience. No, no, no. I am your humble servant. I daren't think of my own convenience when the Almighty Shogun graces me with her presence. I'll deal with it right away. Well, it's not often we have the chance to chat. I'm sure you must have a lot of questions. Right. Paimon wanted to ask that too. The Almighty Shogun that he described didn't sound anything like you at all. I seldom had the time to drink tea. <laughs> Any free time I had was spent practicing martial arts. So, in the vast majority of cases, the one he made tea for was the former Electro Archon, who was also my sister, Raiden Makoto. He may well have had an inkling about there being two Raiden Shoguns, but he always acted as if he was completely unaware of it. The philosophy of life that he shared with us just now, that was Makoto's view on reality. She always saw things that way. You and Makoto had pretty different views, huh? Indeed we did. It was the biggest difference between us. In her eyes, the most precious things in this world were dreams. The yearning for a better future held by living beings. They are similar, but not identical. When you came charging into the plain of Euthymia, I saw human aspirations light up the sky far above in the form of countless stars. This somewhat shook me. Now, it seems like she was right. While I took the wayward path. Wow, there sure was a lot going on beneath the surface. Makoto saw a bigger picture than I did. In her view, a dream is more imaginary, more abstract than an ambition. An ambition is a yearning for something material, or a concrete outcome. It is finite in nature, and will be replaced by a new ambition in due course. Makoto was more concerned with the force that drives humans to constantly generate new ambitions in the first place. It is something innate, rooted in instinct. In other words, it is something eternal. That's... Uh... To put it simply, Makoto wasn't concerned about outcomes. I didn't understand at the time. How can we say that we are maintaining eternity when things are constantly moving forward and evolving? I suppose what it comes down to is the definition of eternity she set out with. Yes, it does. <laughs> I always thought that she must have grasped some elusive, arcane wisdom to arrive at the conclusions she did. But in the last analysis, Makoto's philosophy was, on the surface at least, an elegantly simple one notwithstanding that it was also the more prudent choice, based on a more mature, far-sighted outlook. Do you feel you're starting to understand her better now? You have already witnessed my previous views on eternity, but now I no longer cling to what was lost. <laughs> I suppose that means our differences have been reconciled. Almighty Shogun, I found a tea set. This one in particular should be fit for your Excellency's use. It's quite beautiful. Thank you. You are too kind. A humble servant such as I does not deserve the gratitude of the Almighty Shogun. It's all good, sir. She's actually pretty chill. Let us return. We ought not keep Furuyama waiting too long.
He wouldn't have gone looking for a tea set himself, would he? <sighs> or... Perhaps the ley lines did not have the power to sustain him for very long. As was the case with the memory we saw earlier. So... So we won't get to drink his tea? We didn't even have a chance to say goodbye. <laughs> the information held in the ley lines is complex and disorderly. The fact that we were able to meet him to begin with was a miracle of fate. <laughs> well, this chance won't come often, and we do have a tea set. Perhaps I should try my hand at making us a pot of tea. I've watched Furuyama brew tea on many occasions. I doubt I should have any major problems doing it myself. The tea is ready. Please give it a try. So many thoughts were racing through my head as I was brewing it. I... I'm not sure how to explain it. You're right. But the things we've seen today have brought back many memories for me. I've been reminded of many people, too. Kitsune Saigu, Makoto, and all the other friends who I watched pass even further back. Back at the Yashiro Commission, I kept the conversation reasonably light-hearted. But now... I'd like to broach a heavier topic, if I may. The events of 500 years ago not only robbed me of my friend, Kitsune Saiku. They also took Makoto away from me, for good. She died in that disaster too? Yes. She went to Konria alone, without telling me. Unlike me, Makoto was no martial artist. Whenever similar crises had arisen in the past, I was always the one to face them in her stead. But this time... The circumstances were so grave that Makoto had no choice but to leave me behind. Or... Perhaps it was more that she went ahead of me, put herself in front of me, so that I would remain hidden. In any case, by the time I realized what was happening... Yes. It was too late. I arrived only in time to hear her dying breath. She had already lapsed into unconsciousness by that point. So all I could do was enter into her mind. As far as you're concerned, it would be somewhere similar to the plane of Euthymia. It was there that we bid each other a final farewell. I cried bitterly. Even in those final moments, I couldn't understand her actions. Why did she go to Conria first, and not I? Why did she keep me in the dark about it? Was it to shield me? It was there and then that I resolved to pursue eternity. As a testament to that decision, I saved her realm of consciousness just before it collapsed completely and brought it back to Inazuma. That's quite a story. When I returned to Inazuma, I was shocked to find that a great sakura tree had appeared on Mount Yogo. The tree that you know as the sacred sakura. That's exactly what everyone back then told me as well. That it had existed since time immemorial. They were so matter-of-fact about it, and couldn't at all understand what I was so surprised about. No one questioned it, and yet its presence contrasted so starkly with the area as I remembered it. It seemed as if I was the only one to have noticed it appear suddenly out of thin air. In the end, I simply had to accept that it was a miraculous effect of Makoto's consciousness. With the help of the sacred Sakura's power, I was finally able to overcome the monsters and quell the disaster in Inazuma. This is all really hard to understand. Kind of beyond Paimon's level. Yes. 
She had such a great love for this land, and for its people. In this respect, I still do not compare to her. I once told myself that I would never speak of these events again. Facing the fact that she is gone is unbearably painful. But even the tea that is most bitter to the tongue, once swallowed, leaves some sweetness in the throat. And it's time I came to terms with it all. Oh, um, while we're on the topic, since you experienced that battle in person... Brother? Hmm. I had heard that you were looking for your family. You mean to say that he was somehow involved in the Conria disaster? Based on what we've learned so far, it seems so, yeah. I'm sorry. I wasn't there for the whole thing. By the time I arrived, the worst of the fighting was already over. And also, my mind was consumed entirely with the plight of Inazuma and the fate of those closest to me. So, I am afraid I can't help you. Oh, well, that's a shame. But it can't be helped, I guess. Boy, both of you have experienced great tragedy. With this last cup of tea, let us honor the tea master's memory. Thank you, Destiny, for giving us the chance to meet again. We should go. Let's keep following the traces. Very well. Based on my investigation so far, I believe this next pack of monsters should be the last. Once again, please leave them to me. Hey! Hey! Uh, are you sure you're alright? You're scaring us! <clears throat> Fear not. Fighting is what I do best. Shine down! There is no escape! Illusion shattered! Are you alright? I'm fine. I... Shine down! Inazuma shines eternal! There is no escape! Shine down! Torn to oblivion! Apologies. Don't worry about it. Just take a breather and get your strength back. We'll deal with the monsters. Look, that's the same light again. Where am I? Who are you? 
Almighty Shogun, you're here too! Are you injured, Your Excellency? <sighs> I'm quite alright. Just feeling a little stiff. We, the Shogunate Samurai, will defend the Shogun until the very end. Come on, men! They're coming back for more! Let's get them! Don't! It's too dangerous! Danger is our duty, ma'am. If we were the kinds to shy away from danger, we never would have taken up arms to begin with. No need to worry, Almighty Shogun. When the situation looks bleak, we will draw on the power granted to us by the gods. Is that a vision? It certainly is. I know the gods are omnipotent, and their willingness to grant their power to humans means they have high expectations for us. If the Almighty Shogun is in trouble, now of all times is the moment for us to honor that! So that's how samurai of that era understood visions, huh? Nobody knew where your excellency had gone, and we were starting to despair. But now we've found you. You're right here with us. Just the sight of you appearing before us once more has reignited the hope in our hearts. This hope is the light that will guide us out from the darkness. Everyone on me! We'll help too! Huh? Affirmative, but watch your backs. Protect the Almighty Shogun! Cryo Incarnate! My will and all hail! No touching! Ha! Seems like their attacks are finally over. <laughs> I've never fought so fiercely before. Thank you all. Um, are you okay? Maybe you should keep resting. I'm fine. I feel much better already. You fought phenomenally. It was truly awe-inspiring. The monsters will definitely come back. And when they do, it'll be more than a few rift hounds this time. Quickly, escort Her Excellency back to Inazuma City, and regroup with the General's forces as soon as possible! When everyone sees the Almighty Shogun safely returning, their spirits will be lifted! Well, what are you guys gonna do? We will stay here and guard against the monster's advance. We cannot afford to let them get any further. We are brothers in arms. As long as we stick together, we can face any number of monsters that come our way. Just leave it to us. Fighting is what we do best. But the Almighty Shogun is the only one of us with the power to change the present state of affairs. Only Her Excellency can turn back the tide of despair and lead us onward into the future. No matter what kind of threat faces Inazuma, we will always place our faith in the Almighty Shogun. Oh, thank you all very much. I promise you that I will create a bright future for Inazuma. I should not have left it this late to make this promise. But from this moment forth, know that I shall be true to my word. Don't worry, Your Excellency. We will never doubt your word as long as we live. With you leading us, we will claim back everything that Inazuma has lost. Glory to the Shogun! Glory to, to the, the Shogun! Shogun. They're gone. It was both. The people's sacrifice has always caused me immense pain. But in dwelling on the tragedy, I overlooked their splendor. The grief blinded me to how brightly they shone in their final moments. The result being that in the centuries since their sacrifice, I have dishonored their will. You could take the view that whatever I say to them is meaningless, because they are but disembodied memories held in the ley lines. But even so, they are due a resolution. I owe it to them, and to all the people who have placed their faith in me to date. Well, Paimon thinks that even if it's a few hundred years later, 
You're doing right by them now, and that's what counts. Thank you for your comforting words. But this is my basic duty as Inazuma's Archon, and I have neglected it for far too long. I used to think just like that samurai, that I was first and foremost a warrior, and my only duty was to face whatever challenge came my way. But what Inazuma needs more than a warrior is someone like Makoto. Even though I am utterly unlike Makoto and can never become the person she was, I still need to do the things that she would have done. Yes, they are. They are strong and resilient and have much to be proud of. As the Raiden Shogun they revere... Well said. Sounds to Paimon like you figured things out. Change will come to Inazuma, and with it, new possibilities. This will take time, but eventually, the future will bring healing to the scars of the past. No matter how long it takes, I am committed to bringing this to fruition. This is my promise. Now that we've dealt with the Rift Hounds, this matter is halfway resolved. It does not appear that the threat will escalate for the time being. I will leave the Tenryo and Yashiro commissions to handle the follow-up work, such as investigating the origins of this incident and tending to the root system. Alrighty then, let's move on! He looks calm on the outside, but Paimon bets her emotions must be all over the place right now, huh? She seems to have changed a lot since we last met her. What's wrong, eh? Come on, keep up! Uh, uh, <sighs> What's going on? Are you feeling unwell again? Uh, my body... I can't move it. Uh, it looks like... the situation... is more serious than I thought. No need. She is calling me. The time has come. Can you help me walk? I need to go to the cave below the Grand Narukami Shrine. Why? What's in there? A battleground. One where I shall sever ties with the past and take the first steps into the future. Finally here. The entrance should be nearby. Whoa! Where'd that Tory gate come from? Uh, it's getting worse again. But it's fine. I'm happy. I'm about to put an end to it all. This is a place I once sealed off with my own hands. <sighs> the entrance to Raiden Makoto's realm of consciousness. Uh, it looks like she will no longer allow me to do with this body as I please. Huh? What are you talking about? And who is she? Makoto?
<sighs> Follow me. We meet again, Traveler. This body is an assistant to the One Within, but it is also the guardian of the rules. Should the One Within wish to stray from the rules, this body shall stand in her way. Wait! Paimon knows that voice! Is that... the puppet? You have wandered the realm in my body, and you appear to have grasped the true essence of eternity. You believe your present self has greater certainty than your former self. Thus, you believe your present self is correct. Don't you? But have you really been enlightened with new ideas? Or have you been degraded by irreversible erosion? I'm here to show you my answer. We are both warriors. And the dialogue we must now have shall be conducted by the Blade alone. The discomfort I was experiencing earlier was caused by the Shogun rejecting my continued use of her body. As she indicates, once I started entertaining the idea of change, I became hostile in her eyes. But inside a realm of consciousness, I exist independently of her. She cannot affect me in this way. Though she is a puppet, the Shogun has her own consciousness too. When necessary, she appears here to confront me. The rules I set for the Shogun are... No. The Shogun herself is the manifestation of my past ideals. The very foundation stone of eternity. It shall not be easily swayed. I would not try to change her if it wasn't necessary. Isn't there any other way? Can't you talk it through or something? But they both just want the best for Inazuma. My form is a symbol of supreme majesty, in which has been vested power over all the realm. It is the cohesive embodiment of all that constitutes the Raiden Shogun. It inherits A's pain, the pain of inevitable loss that comes as she moves forward. So too does it inherit her determination to reach eternity. Every action undertaken is for the sake of resisting erosion. Determination, courage, love, Hatred. All of these will be degraded and distorted by the incessant flow of time. Only rules shall remain constant for eternity. Those were my thoughts when I created you. Now, they are towering obstacles that I have no choice but to overcome. You wish to make yourself my enemy? I am your past, the everlasting law, the guardian of eternity. And I am she who promised a dream to her subjects. Raiden A! In the end, even the proud and mighty Oni Maiden was cut down in disgrace. Though your blade has been cleansed of her blood and filth, never shall it shine as brightly as it once did. Insolent! Illusion shattered! Weak! Pathetic! Weak! Shine down! Inazuma shines eternal! Before. Sakura blossoms that once filled the skies fell to the ground as pitch black rain. 
As long as the ley lines flow, the relentless erosion of time will never stop. It appears your martial prowess has not dulled. But how long can your will remain strong? How the heck? In this realm of consciousness, her existence is tenacious indeed. She was built to resist erosion. Her will is stronger than any other living beings, including you and me. Maybe. But I have to prove to her that my present will is no product of erosion. The future I shall forge will be a grand undertaking. One that will be resistant to erosion. If I don't do this, the Shogun's rules can never change, and Inazuma can never move forward. This is my duty. No matter how long this battle may last, months, years, centuries, and no matter how many times we must fight, I will defeat her. Five hundred years ago, humanity proved their strength in battle. Here in the present, they rely on their ambition to challenge wayward practices, tear them out like the diseased wood of an old sakura tree, so that new, healthy branches might spring to life in their place. It is about time that I learned to trust them. I understand that. But if the dreams of which Makoto spoke are true eternity, a short moment for which the Shogun does not exist is nothing to fear. I fight for the everlasting future of Inazuma. However long the battle may last, it is but a drop in the ocean of eternity. I vow to the subjects of Inazuma that I shall one day return. This is my oath. Please, be my witness. During my absence, I place everything in Miko's hands. B but this means that... Pass on my words! <coughs> Looks like we got kicked out. Oh, what do we do? Are we really just gonna leave A and the Shogun to keep on duking it out in there for extra space? change the Shogun's rules, but still! Right? Also, A can be pretty stubborn at times, and has a history of rushing into difficult situations. What if she gets too obsessed with winning, and she forgets why she's there in the first place? It could happen, and then she might never leave again! Yeah, we should help her out, like we did last time! The quicker she gets through this, the better. Is there any way we can cut down how long she needs to spend in there? Or, you know, help her win the fight? Well, whatever, we can't let anything bad happen to A while she's in there! Oh, but we also can't get in there anymore! Okay, well, first things first, we gotta find a way back in. Oh, come on, brain juice, don't feel time on now! Um, okay, maybe... 
maybe if we both ran into it at the same time really, really hard. Oh, you're right. Paimon nearly forgot about her. Who knows if she really understands these consciousness realm playing thingies more than we do, but there's no one else we can turn to. Ugh. All right, up the mountain we go. <laughs> Manifest! Someone's not in the best of moods. Hmm, let me guess. You're all tangled up in another situation and need me to unravel it for you. I hope you realize how lucky you are. If it was anyone else, I don't think I'd have the patience to keep greeting them with a smile after the first few times. But you're always smiling! That was a figure of speech, do you understand? Nitpicking my turns of phrase. Mm, the sheer audacity. Oh, yeah, yeah. Something really big's happened. It's a... She... She... Oh, okay, I see. So, A's decided to palm Inazuma off on the humans, while she goes off on her own to fight a fierce battle that doesn't even have an end date. Impossibly stubborn. Jumps straight to the most extreme course of action imaginable, presumes her sheer will can see her through, despite a near impossible goal that requires nothing short of the very peak of her abilities. <laughs> yes, that sounds like A, all right. You know as well as I do that she's always been like this. Why well, start fretting about it now? Rushed into it without thinking. <laughs> well put. Oh, she acts like such a child sometimes. So you seem to be under the impression that I am able to offer some sort of help? Who gave you that idea? Uh, is she playing dumb? She's doing this on purpose, for sure! Aha! Uh -huh. You're learning, little one. But really, the truth of the matter is that I don't know much more about Raiden Makoto's realm of consciousness than you do. All I know is that it's the foundation of the sacred Sakura. And from what I've heard, it's a little different from A's plane of euthymia. Because Raiden Makoto is no longer alive? Not just because of that. The nature of the space itself is different in some way. But I can only speculate. You're the ones who have actually been there, so you tell me. What was it like? Anyway, we needn't worry about the details too much. It'll just be a little difficult to explain things later on, that's all. First things first. Follow me to the entrance. Now then, I always have my ways. It's just a question of how crafty I need to be. To the outsider, the realm of consciousness is a very abstract concept. Luckily, I'm A's familiar, so I can sense her rough whereabouts. In other words, even though I can't pinpoint the exact spatial location of this realm, I can still send you to where A is. So, it's abstract, but has a location, but you don't know where it is, but you can still send us there. What? Yes, no need to try and understand it. Let me put this simply. Right now, she is surrounded by chaos. Everything is turbulent and disordered. If you try to force your way in, you could be swept away by a giant wave that sets you down in an unknown corner of space-time. This is precisely why when entering the plane of Euthymia, it's much safer if you place your consciousness in a physical object first. What? <laughs> All right, well, I might stay here then. You two can go in. <laughs> Suit yourself. Worst case scenario, all we stand to lose is A. So what's the big deal? You... Uh, Paimon did it up to here with both of you! Oh, fine! Paimon's coming too. Oh. Well, if you're quite sure, then of course. Now, I shall send you on your way. <clears throat> Hmm. I say... Oh, nothing. It just seems extraordinarily chaotic, that's all. 
my suspicions have been confirmed. By the way, remember to focus constantly on your heartfelt wishes when you enter inside. Only a strong enough will can prevent you from being swallowed by the giant waves of abstract space. Only if you are strong enough can I deliver you to the right destination. Well then, the door is open. Hop on in. I'll stay outside and provide what stability I can. I'll be ready to respond if anything happens. I'm placing my god in your capable hands. For my sake, and for Inazuma's, please. Bring her back. Miko? You better know what you're doing! That's enough chatter. Get to work. Remember to focus constantly on your heartfelt wishes when you enter inside. Only if you are strong enough can I deliver you to the right destination. How can this be? You have returned. But how were you able to get back in? And how come you have not changed at all in all these years? This is a duel to remember. It is as if we have returned to the moment when the laws of eternity were first established. Your will today is as strong as it was back then. Over countless battles, not once have you lost. And never have you shown the slightest hesitation. Had I made all enemies of Eternity stand against you, you still would not have wavered. For your firm commitment to enforcing the rules, you have my admiration too. You bring honor to the title of Guardian of Eternity. Now these two return once more to this space. <laughs> An inevitability of fate, perhaps. Then... Let this be our final duel, the conclusion to that which began 500 years ago. Final duel? Hmm. So you're finally willing to stand back, Traveler. I'm going to be the start of something new. The time our duels took to fight was long enough to witness the rise and fall of nations. The energy they consumed, great enough to vaporize the oceans and turn days into nights. The will was enough, sufficient to penetrate minds and crush dreams. Yes, you have endured. I will endure forever. Witness! The there is no escape! Calamity! Shine down! Perish! Illusion shattered! In spirit! There is no escape in my hands! Transcend all constraints! Illusion 
illusion shattered. In her. The will I carry within me will never be eroded nor destroyed. <sighs> this is the end. You have won. I believed you were incapable of transcending the past. But it seems my belief was baseless, and I underestimated your spirit. <sighs> but a will that cannot be eroded has no way to embrace the future. You need not worry about the future. And you aren't alone. I know your power more than anyone else. Had I relied upon my strength alone, I would have lost this duel for sure. Yet, my reason for fighting redefined my martial prowess and redrew my limits. I now carry the gaze of the myriad of expectant eyes that look to the light in the heavens. And whenever I think of this, I feel something stirring within Muso Ishin. The blade that I inherited from Makoto seems to be trying to guide me. To encourage me. I noticed it also. Just now, in the heat of battle, it seemed to unleash a new and unfamiliar power. This power is beyond the limits of my understanding. This blade belonged to Makoto. Perhaps it can only respond to me with its full power when I truly understand and believe in her. <laughs> when I clasped Muso Ishin in my hands, I had the feeling that she was by my side once again. It was at once a familiar feeling, and a strange one. Makoto barely wielded a blade in her life, and yet, her blade brings me closer to her. You have my approval. Your present will is not the product of erosion. I shall no longer stop you from attempting to modify the rules. From this day forth, this body will remain your assistant. I won't design any more rules that can never be changed. You used to represent my past, but from today onward, you are me. Makoto never saw me as a fearless weapon. Likewise, I should not regard you as a mere tool. Hm. You truly have changed. I suppose this is what humans call Growth. I understand. I shall become your shadow, just as you were once Makoto's shadow. The duties I perform will not change. But as a warrior, I look forward to the chance to fight like this again in the f- Hmm. <laughs> Do you say this because you have not yet reconciled yourself with your defeat? It was simply a new experience for me. One that is worth reliving. Have you... finished fighting, then? Like, for real this time? Hmm? Hello, A. And greetings, those who have come to bear witness. I am Raiden Makoto, the previous Electro Archon, who failed in my duties and left you all to pick up the pieces. Makoto? I'm so happy. You've come so far. I always knew he would make it here in the end. I left a faint fragment of my will in Muso Ishin, so that in the moment that you unleashed its full power, I too would be released. <laughs> a convoluted way to reach you, but... Well, you held such deeply entrenched views at the time that you wouldn't have listened to a word I said. There was no time to wait for you to have a change of heart. Please forgive me. All I could do was find some way to wait until you came to me. But... You never mentioned this to me. Everything happened so suddenly. I'm sorry. I've always felt terrible for having to entrust Inazuma to you all of a sudden. I should have been the one to impart these ideas to you, a little at a time, to dissuade you from your pursuit of stillness. Did you know what was about to happen in Conria? I had some sense of it. That place... was not somewhere that any Archon could afford to ignore. 
In my present form, I can no longer perceive time. I don't know how long we have been separated before this reunion, and I don't know what Inazuma has experienced in the meantime. But I know that this must have been an extremely arduous journey for you. And I'm sure you must have wanted to shed tears many times along the way. Don't look down on me. <laughs> See? You admit it. It was with this possibility in mind that I left a parting gift for you. Something to soothe Inazuma's pain. Here, take it before my last shred of consciousness fades away. But it is you who must take the most important step. Huh? Oh. The light turned into a seed? The miracle tree that blesses the people, in this moment new to the world and yet to be known. When to plant it, where it shall bloom, she who brings it into being must let her heart and dreams decide. Grant it life, eh? Is this... is it really? <sighs> Eternity extends time into infinity. Dreams illuminate each moment within. When both shine in unison, the sacred Sakura blooms from the darkness, finally free from the clutches of the heavenly principles. Now the nightmare has dissipated, and reality is made whole. The vision we both yearn for is still further ahead. My only regret is that I cannot witness Inazuma's future, nor can I walk this journey with you. Do you know, A? I am so happy right now, because my final wish has now come true. Your polearm once protected me from countless calamities. For this, I've always felt indebted to you. Though I could never repay you in full, this sacred Sakura will buy you some time until you are ready to awaken and embrace the new. What do you think? Did it do the trick? <laughs> this time, it really is goodbye, eh? <sighs> goodbye, Makoto. So the A of the present planted the sacred Sakura in the realm of consciousness, and it took root in the Inazuma of the past. No matter what you make of it, it's quite incredible. All of this is thanks to Makoto's power. Her understanding of eternity is much more profound than mine. Eternity is a concept intimately connected with time. When you begin to touch on eternity, the concept of time becomes murky. A place where time is meaningless and cannot be understood with ordinary logic. Ah, huh, so that was the turbulence I was sensing. Perhaps that is the reason why you were able to return precisely to this point in time without any problems. And yet, that sense of disorderliness has now completely disappeared. I don't fully understand yet. But my intuition tells me that the reason for everything... It's that seed. Hmm. Well, I'm not convinced that it was Makoto's power alone. I know what you mean. Perhaps Makoto got a higher power involved in all of this. <laughs> but whatever the explanation... Her solution is what saved us all. Without the sacred Sakura, Inazuma would likely have been completely swallowed up centuries ago by that disaster and the filth. I know you've always perceived there was something special about the sacred Sakura, but to me, it has always been there. 
You've tried in the past to prove to me that there's a connection between the sacred Sakura and Makoto's consciousness. But unfortunately, you never did persuade me, did you? No. But I understand why now. It was because the sacred Sakura hadn't even been planted then. Um, but don't you think that tree looked a lot different than how it does now? The sacred Sakura is within my purview at the shrine, so obviously I get to prune it exactly how I like it. Ugh. Now we see who's pulling the strings. I'm joking. That tree has been through a lot since it first sprouted. We have the loving care of Kitsune over the ages to thank for how it appears today. And obviously I played my part too. It's fair to say that very little time passed between the moment you came out of that realm and the moment you re-entered it. But in that same time, centuries of battling took place on the inside, did it not? Traveler, if I'm guessing correctly, you were repeating your wishes to yourself in your mind, weren't you? At that time, I could sense A's whereabouts, but I also sensed anomalies in the flow of time within that space. Suffice to say, time added a whole new dimension to our search. Simply establishing a location was not sufficient. Fortunately, your will was strong enough that the turbulence carried you to the moment in time most likely to be the intersection of all that you were wishing for. The flow of turbulence may well have been influenced by Makoto, but it took everyone's efforts combined to ultimately help A. So this time, it looks like thanks are due to you. Does that mean it wasn't by chance that we ended up at the final duel? We were always meant to be there to witness what was going to happen? I thought that the flow of time was the same on the inside and the outside. So it was a great shock to me when the Traveler reappeared. My first thought was, has a great disaster befallen Inazuma? But it turned out you had come to rescue me. You came for my sake, to help me reach the best possible outcome. You too have my thanks. You have done much for me. And A, how are you feeling now? My body has fully recovered and the Shogun's will no longer fights against me. Always thrilled to hear you're in good health. But I was really asking about your emotions. Have you managed to calm down? After all, you saw Makoto in there, didn't you? I only heard her voice. I wouldn't say I saw her. <sighs> I'll be fine. It brought a few things back, of course, but I've made my decision to move forward. I have to say, this has reminded me once again just how brilliant Makoto was. She predicted all the ways in which Inazuma's future could unfold all the way back then. <laughs> she even factored my immaturity into her plan. It's all thanks to her that Inazuma lived to see this day. I just planted a seed. Yeah, it was thanks to everything you did that you got to see her again. That's amazing! Thank you. Today, at long last, you and Inazuma finally emerge from the shadows cast by the events of centuries past. Makoto and you are Inazuma's past and future, and both are indispensable. It's rare to hear such comforting words from you. I graciously accept them. Oh, come on. You only think it's rare because you never used to listen to a word I say. Makoto said the exact same thing! <laughs> Great minds think alike, hmm? I wonder, does that qualify me to, maybe, take the position of Shogun for a couple of days? Actually, no. Forget that. Far more trouble than it's worth. We will have to end the frivolities there. There is much work to be done. The Shogun and I will closely review the Inazuma of today to find out where things currently stand. Then, we will give careful consideration to the future. After that, I will abolish the Sakoku Decree. Really? That's huge news! I am no longer pursuing an eternity defined by stasis. In which case, there is no further need to keep the nation under lock and key. 
I don't doubt that many challenges lie ahead for Inazuma. I'm looking forward to it. Many challenges still lie ahead for Inazuma, but I am prepared for them. Abolishing the Sakoku degree has a myriad of implications. It would be folly to say that it will be all positive, and there will be no negative repercussion. For example, I can foresee the outside world posing a threat to Inazuma's businesses. These are the issues that I must work to solve. Hey, you're thinking about this all so conscientiously. I've only got as far as wondering whether I'll be able to sell entrance tickets to the Grand Narukami Shrine in the future. <laughs> Honestly, Miko. Many challenges still lie ahead for Inazuma. Makoto's gaze was always fixed on the people of Inazuma. I always assumed it was because that was her duty. But now, I see that hers was a gaze full of delight and hope. It was not just a duty. But a joy, too. If the people of the past deserve the gods' attention, then so do the people of the future. Indeed. No longer will I ignore their passions and dreams. Many challenges still lie ahead for Inazuma. To put it bluntly, it was constant torture, with no end in sight. Faced with an endless battle, I had to remain focused at all times. Had my concentration lapsed for but a moment, the Shogun's blade would have taken my life. Safe to say, were it not for my previous experiences in combat, my skills would not have been up to the challenge. I would most certainly have been- And through it all, many challenges still lie ahead for Inazuma. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. I will be sure to remind the Tenryo and Yashiro Commissions of their duties in this regard. It's not only the monsters that I am worried about. I'm concerned about what else might escape from the Sacred Sakura. That's a tough one, all right. There's plenty more besides memories held in the Ley Lines. Since you clearly understand, perhaps you could think about making an effort, too. Many challenges still lie ahead for e Ahem. <clears throat> Yaimiko said nothing of the sort, and the Traveler has some nerve making up spurious claims about her while she is still present. Some words are not to be passed on. Trust me, you don't want to know the cost of betraying me. Just think of the things I said to you as our little secret. What are you talking about? Nothing. Ooh, I suddenly want some fried tofu. Many challenges still lie ahead for Inazu- Many challenges still lie ahead for- I 